and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be telling you my top tips on how you can prevent stretch marks in your pregnancy. So I wasn't going to make a video like this at all except that last time I did a video I mentioned in my 20 week um, 20 week pregnancy update I think it was that I have been starting to kind of do the same things that I did with my last pregnancy in terms of preventing stretch marks and I've been really really lucky so as someone who I would say would have a sort of genetic predisposition to getting stretch marks as in I've got a slightly darker skin tone and um, my mum got stretch marks really badly on all of her pregnancies. I also when I hit puberty got stretch marks literally everywhere you could get them. I got them on my back, I got them on my tummy, I got them on my boobs, I got them on my hips, I got them on my legs. So when I got pregnant I was like okay I'm just assuming that I'm going to get them but I'm going to do what I can to sort of keep them, keep them to a minimum. I uh, keep my skin really healthy and see what happens and I didn't get even the tiniest stretch mark with Atticus. So I'm going to do the same things this pregnancy. I am now well over the halfway point in this pregnancy, 25 weeks when I'm filming this and I haven't gotten even the tiniest peep but I've been minding my skin really well. So this video is going to just be the top things that I'm kind of doing to sort of keep my skin really healthy and supple and elastic and hopefully it'll work as well for you as it has for me but I know it was something that I was really worried about last time and yes for sure it's something that our body is meant to do and it's just you know I love the term tiger stripes it's a huge part of what we do to grow our babies but many of us also spend an awful lot of money and you know invest an awful lot of you know time looking at different lotions and potions that are going to help so I approach it from a little bit of a different perspective. I don't spend a whole lot of money on these things and they're things that are going to benefit your health overall anyway. So I thought I'd share them with you today. Um, any products or bits and pieces that um, some research that I mention, I will do my best to link it all down below in the description box. So if you're curious, make sure and go and check. I'm sitting here sipping my tea as I'm filming. It's going to be quite a relaxed video. The first thing that I do is think about what I can do to sort of invest in my skin from the inside out. So there are two supplements that I actually take, uh, bearing in mind we are a sort of plant-based family, so um, I don't, I choose not to take any kind of collagen. Um, there unfortunately is no way of taking a collagen supplement from a vegan perspective, but if you're not vegan, I would say look at the research on that. There's quite a lot that actually backs up the uh, consumption of collagen in your pregnancies for skin elastic elasticity. However, what I do take is quite a high dose of vitamin C. So this is just a generic Tesco brand vitamin C, but it's the dosage that's really important. So vitamin C is actually the sort of precursor for collagen production in your skin. So if you have plenty of vitamin C, in fact, research suggests that we need to be taking in about 3000 micrograms per day to see a difference in terms of skin health, in terms of reducing fatigue, in terms of increasing our sort of libido and sex drive. So it's um, another research, a little bit of research that I'll link down below if you're kind of more curious, but I have have always taken a sort of higher dose of vitamin C from a sort of you know dietary perspective just in terms of skin health never mind those other little benefits that come along with that so um, high dose vitamin C is really beneficial luckily it is a water soluble vitamin so there's no kind of risk of toxicity and having too much of it all that happens is you would just piddle it out and excrete it um, through all of those fantastic bodily functions that we already know how to do. So I take a really high dose of vitamin C and I generally will take that outside of pregnancy as well. That's not specific to pregnancy, but it's only really something that I've been doing the last three years or so since I started kind of minding myself a little bit better. So that's the first supplement that I will take. I won't bother linking that down below because it's just a generic band and really and truly I don't think it matters masses massively uh, massively about what sort of brand that you get you get it's more so the dosage and how well your body is able to break it down so the next one that i take is a really good sort of omega complex this is from flora and it's their vegetarian algae dha so it's a really nice complex of it's got omega 3 6 and 9 in here which is really hard to get from a plant-based perspective um particularly the omega 3s are hard to get um from a vegetarian source 
So I've done quite a bit of research on that one. That's, I'll have that link down below. But that's a huge kind of part in terms of just making sure that your skin is really well nourished and that there's enough of those kind of natural oils there to keep your skin really supple and elastic. Great as well for at a later stage if you're thinking about sort of um, your perineum and keeping that tissue nice and elastic and healthy. The next thing that I do is something that I am really loving and that is dry skin brushing or body brushing. I got a new, I invested in a new body brush. This is the Body Shop body brush. Uh, my sister actually got it for me and it's beautiful. It's got just that the, the right amount of like, oh that sounds so lovely, bit of ASMR there for you. And um, it's just the right amount of sort of hard bristles. You can really feel it working. So I'll see, can I link a video on kind of the importance and sort of how to do it in terms of technique. But the idea is, is that you are sort of improving the blood flow um, to your skin and sort of doing gentle stimulation like that can help get rid of sort of dead skin cells and help with sort of further cell regeneration. So it's something that I've been doing um, actually since I was postpartum with Daisy. So I wanted to kind of find a way to sort of create some time around reconnecting with my body and just all the bits that you kind of forget about. So this has been a really nice way of doing that and I've kind of enjoyed. I only do this about, so I take my supplements out once a day, about once a day, once a day. Uh, sometimes I'll break up the vitamin C and have that kind of morning and evening just in terms of solubility and um, I will always combine that with my iron supplement if I'm taking one as well because that helps, aids with the absorption. But the body dry skin brushing I will do, luckily, I'll be lucky if I do it once a day. Um, I always do it before a shower or before a bath and then finish off with my kind of creams and lotions and potions. When it comes to lotions and potions, I don't tend to invest a whole lot in them. I do think that there is a huge amount of, you know, a lot to be said for keeping your skin really well moisturized, um, even just in terms of comfort. As your belly sort of gets bigger, it can get quite uncomfortable, quite itchy and quite um, sort of tight. So I think keeping it really well moisturized can be really comforting, but I don't know how much I personally think it does in terms of preventing stretch marks. So what I will generally do is, you know, if you're doing your, your skin, your skincare on your face and you're always left over with a little bit of product on your hands, instead of rubbing that into my neck or I'll do my neck too, generally, um, I will then just put all of the excess on my bump. So one of the big things that I've been doing while my skin is nice and moist, fresh out of a shower or I'll maybe spritz a bit of rose water or a little bit of just damp cloth over my tummy first, my boobs, my hips all of the, the general culprits, I'll then apply a little bit of hyaluronic acid. So this is just the one from The Ordinary. I got their super duper size for Christmas and I've already gone through it. I love it just for skincare on my face as well. So what hyaluronic acid does is it actually binds to water. So it doesn't work by itself. You have to apply it when your skin is wet. And what it does is it just really draws in. It says up to three times the amount of water that it would, um, that another moisturizer might do. So I apply that first and um, I also will apply a vitamin C to my skin so I'll do the hyaluronic acid first because that is water-based and then I'll do a vitamin C so what that does is it works with sort of hyperpigmentation so I've actually um last time I didn't do this step uh just because I didn't I wasn't using skincare or vitamin C on my face but this time I haven't gotten that Linnea Nigra that lovely dark line along my tummy and I don't know if that's because I'm using this or just because I don't have for some reason as much melanin in my system but you might um if you're somebody who specifically gets a lot of kind of melasma that kind of darkening that pregnancy darkening that kind of pregnancy mask some people call it on their face or you get that kind of line lasts a really long time you might find that something like this can kind of lighten that pigmentation or just help to sort of support the health of your of your skin there so i've been using that the same way i would use it on my face and then any excess i'll just rub into my tummy so again, not investing in anything in particular extra, and it's what would generally just go to waste on my hands anyhow. But with those, they're really readily absorbed. So they get absorbed straight into the skin as opposed to something really sort of thick and gooey, like an oil that actually clinically doesn't get absorbed into the skin at all. It just sits as like a sort of top layer, a protective layer on top, which is lovely. But why not have that lovely protective layer sealing something else in? So I'll do those two steps first. A little bit of spray of water or keep my skin nice and damp from a shower or a bath 
then I'll put on my hyaluronic acid followed by my vitamin C and then I will put on a nice kind of sealant so I've been loving the Palmer's um, body lotion they do a stretch mark specific lotion and they do um, just their general body cream and I love the smell of that but then I got this it's just a shea butter organic pure shea butter and I've been it's really thick like really I can't even I think I can even scoop enough out for you it's kind of like a yeah like a really thick kind of consistency it's it's almost like tacky it's that thick so I will take a little scoop of this warm it up between my hands and then kind of massage it into my belly do a little bit of belly massage and this I only do at night time because it's super super sticky and it can actually stain your clothes if you're wearing something a little bit darker as well so I do that at night time warm it up between my hands do a nice little bit of belly massage and that kind of seals in the other ingredients that I've already done bearing in mind I've done my nice little bit of body brushing before that as well the other thing that I'm doing then this time in particular is this is going to be a summer baby and I'm making sure that I am not lying out in the sun. One of the things that I was most excited about, if I'm going to be honest, about having a summer baby was having a lovely tan bump. And very quickly I was sort of reminded myself that actually it's just not worth it because not only are you, you know, risking the same things that you would be if you were to lie out in the sun and, you know, get a nice, a nice suntan and you know, sort of the damage that it does to your skin but also the increased risk of skin cancer and um, you know in terms of just minding your skin you're really breaking down those skin barriers by lying out in the sun so instead of doing that I'm actually applying again the same way I would to my skin in the morning a little bit of SPF so this is a really really cheap but also really good quality one this is a mineral sunscreen and it's SPF SPF 50 and this is from the Eclat natural skincare range and it's just lovely so I've just been applying that if I mean it's Ireland we're not going anywhere fancy this year we're not going anywhere sunny but if we were to have a really warm day and I was going to be out in the garden and have my kind of my top tucked up or have a little bikini on which I haven't quite got gotten to yet but it's something that I'm going to be very very mindful of and I just thought it was worthwhile mentioning here because I know it was one of the first things that I actually said to a friend of mine was oh my gosh I'm gonna be able to have like a lovely tan bump and um Guys, it's just not worth it. So I just thought that I would mention it here for you. I hope you found this helpful. These are the things that I am doing. It's by no means the things that you have to do. I will link um, the research regarding um, the sort of the, that little video for dry brushing and the little link for the intake of both collagen and um, vitamin C for skin health as well as the other benefits down below in the description box. And if there's any more videos that you'd like me to make, please do just let me know and I will do my best to get them out to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching.